Welcome back. Let us start with a new concept process capability. During the measure phase, we need to figure out what is the current performance of the process. For the purpose we make use of process capability analysis and create baselines in the initial phases. This later helps in comparing if the measures taken have helped in improvement or not. In this lesson, we'll cover some basic fundamentals. In any process there are two causes of variation. One is the special cause and other is the common cause. Think of a process of delivering comfy chairs to customers. There may be some instances where delivery was not made as the delivery boy was not present, or chairs could not be built on time due to machine breakdown. This will generate the variability in total turnaround time. If we see this graph here, the middle line is denoting the average turnaround time of 8 days. Upper line is the calculate upper control limit of the process and lower line is the lower control limit of the process. If we see this line chart, the nodes are denoting the turnaround time for each comfy chair in the given duration. There are some points which are going beyond control limits. These instances may have occurred because of some special cause, which are assignable cause and we can correct them. These points beyond control limits are also called as outliers. Process variation due to special causes generate unnatural pattern. This kind of variation is unpredictable. For example, machine malfunctioning, a broken part or an absent operator. These are the special causes which may lead to variation. And it is also not easy to predict such occurrences. When there are special causes present, the process is not stable and we cannot call it under statistical control. Now let us see about the common causes. The inherent process variation which arises due to chance causes or the non-assignable causes. Such factors are not known and cannot be assigned to any output. If we see in this figure, the green pattern is a natural pattern within the control limits of the process. This is the random variation of the process, when there are no special causes. Such causes include normal wear and tear of the tools and machine etc. work conditions. Such process where only common causes are present is a stable process and is known to be under statistical control. Let us now understand more about the stability and capability of the process. We need to understand the terms specification limits and control limits to understand process stability and capability. In this graph, we can see a normally distributed process. The plus minus three sigma limits of this process are known as natural process tolerance limits or the control limits. These are calculated limits based on the data points of the process. We can say that these limits are the voice of the process and they represent process or actual performance. There are another type of limits, called the specification limits. These limits are not calculated from the process data, rather they are given by the customer or are agreed upon with the customer. That is why specification limits are known as voice of the customer and they represent the desired performance of the process. It is not necessary that a process which is within control limits is within the specification limits also. A process within control limits is statistically stable process, a process within specification limits is a capable process. For a process to be capable, it has to be statistically stable. Let us understand the term process stability in a bit more detail. When there is consistency in the output and all the data points lie between the control limits, we call it as a stable process. We also know that there is an inherent variation between data points caused due to common causes. In case there is any data point, beyond the control limits, special causes should be identified and eliminated. We'll also learn about finding special causes and process instability by analyzing control charts and identifying any existing patterns in future lessons of analyze and improve phase. In a six sigma level process, there is a scope of 1.5 sigma shift over time, towards a specification limit, even when the process is stable. As we now know that a capable process is one which is within the specification limits given by the customer. Process capability is the inherent ability of the process to remain within the specification limits. As we saw in previous slide, a capable process is a stable process. Though it is not necessary that a stable process is a capable process. This means a process can be stable, yet it might be off the specification limits. That's why when we analyze process capability, we may find three kinds of issues. 
The figure 1 shows here that the process is not centered between the upper and lower specification limits. Second situation can be when the process spread goes beyond the specification limits due to high variance, even when it is centered. Third case could be when neither the process is centered between the specification limits, nor the process spread is low. Such a process will cause lots of defects and will be highly incapable. We can compare each of these scenarios with a capable process which is represented with green curve. A capable process will generate very less number of defects as it is centered between the specification limits, and also the process spread does not go much beyond the limits. It is very important to assess the process performance in terms of its ability to meet customer requirements or customer specifications. We do this with the help of capability analysis. To do capability analysis we need to include all the observations in a specified time period. It helps in analyzing variation in short-term data. Though this variation can exist within the batches or groups of observation as well as between the groups. It is very important to understand and analyze both type of data. When we are doing capability analysis, first requirement is that the process should be stable. If not, we first need to eliminate the special causes, make the process stable, and then perform capability analysis. The reason behind it is that a stable process is consistent over time and predictable with respect to the outputs. We make use of control charts and time series plot to check the stability of the process. In next lesson we learn how do we do capability analysis. Though we should know that the capability analysis helps us calculate the signal level of the process as it compares voice of process with voice of customer. Here is a small exercise for you. We have provided a few scenarios in the Excel workbook where you need to identify each of them as stable process or capable process both stable and capable process or none. Now we will move to the next lesson. Here we come to an end to this lesson. Should you need any support, feel free to contact us. Thanks for watching this video and see you in the next lesson.